good morning dear students now welcome back to your business studies class now yesterday we have started chapter 4 of business studies which is business services or the services that we will see that how businesses who will sell the service in the market and earn money so we have covered yesterday the nature that what is the nature of these services that means they are intangible they are inseparable and all these things we have covered we have also seen the difference between the service and the goods means what is the main difference between one service and good so goods is something tangible but services are intangible goods are separable but services are inseparable same way goods can be stored for future use but services cannot be stored for future use so we have seen the differences and we also have seen the types of services that personal business and everything the different types of services so now today we move towards business service that what are the different types of business service and everything so we will cover all that today very easy you will enjoy the class i'm sure and these things are generally of general knowledge so you should be knowing everything about this being a commerce student so let's see first thing that we will cover up today is banking so by the name banking this word is not new to us we all know what banks are so we will see that what banking means what is this service and how is it helpful to uh, us in today's generation so see banking main thing is accepting for the purpose of lending or investment of deposits of money from the public means the main motive is they accept for the purpose of lending now they are accepting the money so that they can lend the needy we when we have some savings we go and deposit that in our savings account and from those money their banks lend it to those people who means home loan or who needs car loan or who needs jewelry loan any sort of loan so this is something accepting for the purpose of lending or either they invest these deposits which they have taken from the public because they will also have to repay the public on demand when we go and want our money back from the bank obviously they give us back otherwise and may be withdrawn by check draft or otherwise we can withdraw money either by going to the bank and asking money or through checks or we can draft something so uh, banking is covering all these things in total now banking was started according to the banking regulation act 1949 please remember there is a regulation act for banking which was done in 1949 so all these services of banking are all according to the rules and regulations of this act so understood what banking is the main thing is accepting deposits and lending money so this is what is banking now let's move to the types of banks that means how many types of banks we have generally we have four types of banks so let's see what are the different types of banks so see the first one that you have is commercial banks the second one is cooperative bank the third one is specialized bank and the fourth one is central banks we will cover all these four topics today commercial cooperative specialized central so let's see one by one what these banks are so first one commercial bank so see institutions dealing in money and credit is commercial bank generally the banks that we go your icici or any other banks all the um, say sbi so generally these are commercial bank because they are dealing in money and they are giving us credit also so they are again governed by the indian banking regulation act 1949 means everything they have to follow according to the act so as the act says they follow completely according to the act and do the businesses so commercial banks main thing is lending money to the needy and accepting deposits from the people so they are ultimately dealing in money now let's see the types of commercial banks there are generally two types of commercial banks public sector and private sector some banks are totally owned by public and some banks are owned by the private sector so let's see what these two are so the first one public sector bank they are owned and managed by the government to channelize bank credit with national priorities means they are totally owned and governed by the government as the name says they are public sector and they will channelize the credit system but under national priorities means they will keep the priority for the nation first for india first for example they will keep the priorities of the nation at the top and based on that they will govern they are governed and managed totally by the government and they will give you credit facilities 
so all these banks the bank of india your bank of baroda your state bank of india syndicate bank allahabad bank all these banks are your generally public sector banks you can note the examples if you want for yourself so all these are public sector banks understood now see in 1969 14 banks nationalized by the government of india that means there were 14 banks which was nationalized by the government of india they have given them the status of public sector banks then in 1980 another six banks were nationalized means more six came into the number now total there are 28 public sector banks in india today today if you talk about there are a total of 28 public sector banks some examples i have given again kanara bank alhabad bank punjab national bank so all these are your public sector banks means managed and owned by the government understood in details what public sector is now we move towards the private sector banks so see they are owned and managed by private parties but governed by rbi I means there should be some bank they should, rbi is actually have a central bank so rbi has to govern all the banks so private sector are owned and managed by the private parties but under the governance of rbi that means reserve bank of india so under their system they are governed now they the private sector banks are free to develop their own policy decisions regarding the banking operations means they can have little change in their policy so they have their own policies made their policies are uh, pre hand told to the customers so accordingly you can decide whether you want to open your account in those banks or not so they are managed and owned by private parties please remember now see the examples now 34 private sector banks are there in india means today there are around 34 private sector banks including icici idbi federal bank catholic bank sirian bank dhanalakshmi bank and so on. so around 34 private sector banks you have in india now please remember icici bank is the largest private sector bank in india it's a private sector bank and sometimes they as they said na they have their own rules and regulations so uh, icici generally asks their customers to keep a minimum balance of 10000 rupees i have heard this now practically maybe to some extent it is not that or maybe some changes are done now i am talking about some 4 to 5 years back this was a rule you have to keep a minimum balance of 10000 rupees in that bank so these banks have their own policies and uh, rules so you have to follow those norms if you open the account in these private sector banks understood what are the two types of commercial banks now we move towards the second type of uh, bank which is your cooperative bank so first one commercial now second one is cooperative in that commercial you have had to the uh, two sub parts the public sector and the private sector now let's do the cooperative bank which are organized based on the cooperative principles it means they are based on you know what cooperative is it means they will ultimately do the benefit so they are governed by the provision of the state cooperative societies act it means every state has their own societies act cooperative societies act so they are totally working according to those provisions and it is an important source for rural credit it means rural people those who live in the village areas they get a lot of money from these cooperatives bank like nabard national uh, bank for rural and uh, rural development so all these are cooperative bank they are ultimately helping people who are the members of those banks so they are specially having source for the rural area people they get the credit from these banks so they are based according to the state cooperative societies act please remember what this bank is and this the specialized bank so they are organized to render specific services to the public means these banks are organized to give specific service only to the public as the name says it is specialized bank so they will give special service or specific service to the public example is foreign exchange bank the export import that is exim bank exim stands for export and import then industrial banks so all these are specialized banks who are working according to that specific service who are only giving that specific service to the public so these are those specialized bank please remember and the fourth type that means the central bank the bankers bank means banko ka bhi bank so these are the central bank the bankers bank and they are the head of all the banks 
so they control and regulate the operations of all the commercial bank in the country means all the commercial bank are under the central bank they are answerable to the central bank they are the head so they are banker to the government plus they control the currency system they control the credit policy of the country so everything is in the hand of this central bank in our india the central bank is reserve bank of india which was established in 1935 please remember the year also when was our central bank established the name of our central bank is rbi reserve bank of india and it was established in the year 1935 so they are the bankers bank they control and regulate the operation of all the commercial banks in the country that means all commercial banks are answerable to them and they are the bank to the government also plus currency issues credit policies everything are decided by the central bank and there is a governor for the central bank so presently you know who is the governor of the central bank i'll not tell you it's your answer you will jot down this in your copy and give me the answer yourself who is the present governor of central bank okay so and who is our financial minister also you will give me these two answers so you will write the uh, governor of the cent rbi name and the finance finance minister of our country these two names you will send it to me as a homework okay now we move towards the next topic the functions of the commercial banks means what are the functions of these commercial banks so let's see the functions there are basically two functions of commercial bank primary function and the secondary function okay so primary means basic function accepting and lending deposits and secondary means many other facilities like locker facilities and um other facilities so we will cover up in details today so let's see the first one is primary function so what are the primary functions you see accepting deposits the main and the prime important thing of the commercial bank or the function of the commercial bank is to accept deposits from the public in the form of fds saving banks deposit current deposits recurring deposits see note down this in your copies there are four types of account which you can open in any bank the first one is fd now as the name says fixed deposit so here you do what you give a lump sum amount once and you lock it for a period of time which is up to you generally it is one year maximum it could be for 15 years 20 years according to your own needs so fd means locking up a particular amount so generally the amount this should be 5000 or 10000 so you purchase an fd and the rate of return for the fd is the maximum please remember you get maximum rate for fds only today around fds are giving you around 5 point something means something 5% rate per annum you get for your fds so you can do for first thing is fd the second one is a savings bank deposit which savings account any one of us can have even you can have a savings deposit savings account if you are not even an adult for example my child has a savings account but it is a minor account so sign is to be done by me decisions are to be taken by me but ultimately the name is his and when he grow up when he turns 18 it will become his own account he can use his own sign and they will issue the check and everything under his own name so savings account could be opened for any one of us and we can deposit money as much as we want even if you want you can go and deposit 10 rupees no issues i know the figure is not you know uh, having uh, not having any value these days but if you want you can go and deposit whatever money you have third one is the current account now these account current deposits account are generally meant only for businessmen because in this account no interest is given please remember in this account current account no interest is given to any you know depositor and in a day the person can issue thousands of check and then can deposits also thousands of check because they are doing business so business requires lot of transaction so current deposit that means current account holder do not get any interest and in a day they can deposit and take as much money as they want there is no pros and cons understood and last is recurring deposits rd here same amount you uh, will pay every month now say for example i have opened an rd of 2000 and on a particular date which date you have opened on the same date you are supposed to give that same amount every month so if i have opened a 2000 rupees account on 10th of every month so on every 10th my 2000 rupees will be deducted and it will go to my rd account and i can have this rd account again for one year 
for two year, for four year, as and much as I want. So after that many year, the amount gets matured and you get that money in your hand. So these are the different types of deposits which public can do in a commercial bank. Understood? The second function of this primary, the second second primary function is lending of the funds means it is again a main business of the commercial bank because if they don't lend money to the needy, how will they get the profit? Because if you are going and depositing your money, you are getting interest in return. So bank is not going to pay you from its pocket. The money which you, your money when the bank will issue to someone else, but at a high rate of interest, then only the bank will earn some margin. So say for example, Inaya wants to go and deposit 5,000 in the bank and next day, say for example, Shubhakangshi wants to buy, uh, not buy, Shubhakangshi wants to take 10,000 rupees as a loan. Bank will pay Inaya only say 5% per annum. But from Shubhakangshi, the bank will charge 8% or 9% per annum. Thus, that 3% will be the bank's profit. Understood? They will pay Iana less and they will charge from Shubhakangshi more. And thus, they will earn the profit. So, this is the main business of the commercial bank. And the interest charge on such advance is obviously their income. Is that their profit? Now, it may be in the form of cash credit. It may be in the form of overdraft. It may be in the form of term loans. It may be in the form of discounting of this. Anything. Now, what is cash credit? Means giving the cash on credit. Take this money, go home, give it to me in EMIs. You know what is EMIs? Equated monthly installments. Overdrafts mean you are having only 5,000 in your bank, but you want to withdraw 7,000. So, this is overdraft facility. Discounting of bills mean you have a bill which you will get from your customer, but you want the money today. You can go to any bank and ask the money. Obviously, the bank will give you little less money, but they will ultimately pay you. And term loan means the loan for a number of periods, number of years which you have set and the purpose for which you have set. So ultimately, the main two functions of any primary bank is accepting deposits and lending money. These two is the main function, primary function of any bank, any commercial bank. Understood? Now we move towards the next topic. Secondary function. So let's see. Now it includes agency services and general utility services. All the etc. things that you get from the banks. Nowadays if you want you can even pay your electricity bill through bank. You have to give some standing instructions to your bank. You will say bank that every month you pay my electricity bill. Bank will deduct that amount from your account and every month pay it. But obviously bank will not do it for free. They will charge you some yearly money. They will cut some money for their services. So these are your agency service or general utility service. Agency services are offered to customer and general utility services are offered to the public. See agency service they will only give to their customer who are their customers. Those who have their account in those bank. And general utility means to any public. Even if you, if you don't have an account, if you go to bank, they will offer you that service. Understood? Now let's see the functions in detail. First is check facility. You know what's a check. This is a sample of a check. So collection of the check is a very important service which banks are giving us. There are cross check means end cash through account of the holder. So you give a slash like this on the cross check. And one is a bearer check means end cashed as the bank counter only. You will go and give it in the counter then only it will be end cashed. So check facility is a secondary function which the banks are providing you. Understood? The second one is remittance of the fund. Means transfer of the fund from one account to another. Through the form of drafts. Demand drafts or anything. You can create demand drafts. You can create any other form and transfer the funds from one account to another. I want to transfer it to you. I can do it uh, with the transfer option. So this is a function which banks are providing us. Account from one account to another money gets transferred. And the last function, last secondary function is allied service means personal service. It includes paying your insurance premium, paying your telephone charges, collecting your interest or dividend, anything which you are personally saying the bank to do. Just now I said that if you want to pay your rent or electricity bill, bank will pay it. But obviously they will charge you something at the end. So this is what are personal services. So these are the three secondary functions of the bank. Understood? 
you can also write here in the personal service locker facility and all all these are your again personal you know there is a locker facility in the banks you can go and ask for a locker and keep your belongings those uh, belongings in that locker so these are all your secondary functions understood now we move to the next topic which is our e banking that means electronic banking so let's see this this is uh, now in too much of trend e banking so let's see what this e banking means e banking means electronic banking or internet banking now any user can get connected to the bank's website to perform the banking operations and service with the help of a computer or mobile phone nowadays you can sit bank at home just with the help of your laptop or computer or even mobile phone you can go and connect to the bank's website and perform all the operations that you want to do and bank will give you the service in fact this is now more better because you don't have to physically go to bank in fact banks are you know encouraging more of e banking nowadays so that you don't have to physically go and you know uh, get in touch with people so e banking is getting uh, you know famous too much nowadays even i use e banking so this is better i would also say now let's see what are the services provided by e banking that means what are the various services this e banking gives us so the first thing is in short you have to write atm you know what atm is automated teller machine you go to any atm you can to nowadays to not only take out the money but you can also deposit money in the atm so ultimately atms are accepting deposits and rendering you the money go and press the button and everything pay with the pin you get the money so this is one service which e banking is giving us the second is efts means electronic fund transfer you can easily transfer fund from one account to another again with the help of these uh, transfer of the funds so eft is another banking service which they are providing third one is pos point of sale means any point of sale you go you can just swipe your card and get the point and you don't have to carry cash so you go with your card you can easily swipe and then you can get to buy the product that you want so this is again one service which are provided by e banking edi electronic data interchange nowadays you can easily interchange data between one computer to another this is also with the help of e banking understood and the last function is credit cards you know what credit cards are you don't have to pay in advance you keep buying the things without paying the money and you get a period around 45 days after 45 days you have to pay that amount so this is called your credit card so these are the e banking services just in short you have to write what these e banking services are okay now let's move to the next topic the benefits of e banking that means what are the benefits of having these e bankings so let's see any time service very important thing that this uh, e banking is any time means round the clock 24/7 you can do e banking at any point of time but in the bank you cannot go after 7 p after 5 pm or 6 pm so this is a any time service thing any time you open up the mobile or laptop and do the thing that you want okay number 2 anywhere banking so physically you can sit at home also and do at office also and then do you don't have to go anywhere so this is a anywhere banking thing so this is again a benefit of e banking third one creates financial discipline obviously when you don't have money you can stop using the cards you can stop doing uh, banking functions so you will have a discipline around you because everything you know that if your money is not there in the, you can see the account from yourself if you don't have money you will not buy the things so a sort of discipline comes to you understood less risk and greater security obviously you don't have to physically go and you know handle with the huge amount of cash so handling the cash gets reduced so obviously there is less risk plus greater security sitting at home you can you know transfer lakhs and crores of rupees just in a second so this is more better and more secured form of banking okay and the last one is workload on branches reduced obviously you don't have to when you don't go to banks their workload the people who are working in that branches obviously they get reduced because everything you're doing at home so they you don't have to you know stand in the queue and waste your time plus the banker's time so these are the benefits of e banking in short you have to write okay so we stopped till here we have covered all thing related to banking here today very easy topic and very important topic also write down everything in your notebooks and submit to me after your class thank you have a nice day